What's up, everybody? Welcome into this edition of War Chant TV. I'm Aslan Hudjavandi, joined by pretty much everybody from WarChant.com, founder and administrator of the website, Gene Williams, managing editor, Irish O'Fell, and senior, comma, lead writer, Corey Clark. Hit the thumbs up button. You're watching us on YouTube. We surely would appreciate it. Also, the promo code, which is scrolling at the bottom of your screen right now, uh, gives information on how to join the website for free for 30 days. All right, so on Monday, Mike Norvell uh, did not want to speak about personnel changes, said he would wait until Wednesday to fill us in on that, and uh, he had plenty to talk about. Gentlemen, uh, first off from the top, James Blackman apparently will transfer after he graduates. Uh, Devontae Love-Taylor and Marvin Wilson both will be lost the remainder of the season due to injury. Uh, and then Tamorian Terry, no longer with the program. That's all that was sort of said. Uh, Gene, for you, we, we kind of heard rumblings of something happening on Wednesday, uh, numerous changes. Ultimately, was this a was this a big sort of bombshell of a moment, or uh, maybe a little bit more of a underwhelming sort of a news dump? I think when you lose three players that are as name worthy as these guys, and a quarterback that's I mean been a starter for years, even though he's a backup now, and James Blackman, I think it's pretty pretty newsworthy. It's a pretty huge deal for Florida State. Although the least surprising was Love Taylor, the way he came off the field, you kind of knew it looked like his season was over. That's the least surprising, but in my opinion, the most impactful. I mean, I think he uh, he really was the rock of that offensive line. Man, to, to lose him, you saw the drop off. I mean, I think that's absolutely huge. Whether it's Chubb or Jor Jordan Travis, that's that's tough to try to continue these last few games without him in the lineup there. Um, you know, Terry, I guess a little bit surprising there. Uh, I mean, he's been healthy what two games this year. He just really hadn't added a whole lot. And obviously Marvin Wilson just is massively underachieved all season. And I guess he's been battling, you know, we'll never know the extent, but he's been battling a knee injury uh, most of the season. So it kind of makes sense at this point for him to get that healthy and prepared for the NFL draft. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. It would have been a bigger deal a few weeks ago at this point. We've kind of accepted the season's loss for Florida State. So maybe not as big as it normally would have been. Ira, I mean, the offensive captain is what I think Kenny Dillingham characterized Devontae Love-Taylor as. Marvin Wilson was a preseason All-American. and uh, I mean, the, the loss of those two players alone, um, I mean, I guess Love-Taylor is probably more of an impact because we haven't seen Marvin play to his uh, sort of usual capacity, I guess. So what, were your, what was your first reaction when you heard the news? Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, I think that's the weird thing about this story is, as Gene said, like on paper, it's going to be jarring to people, especially for people that uh, maybe haven't been watching the team. Um, but the, the, of that group, the guy that's had the biggest impact this year was Devontae Love Taylor. And we kind of knew after what we saw on Saturday, it was a non-contact injury, the way he went down, it was probably going to be a season ending injury. So that wasn't unexpected. And these other things, you know, Marvin didn't play this past week. Didn't seem to really change anything with his defensive line. You know, it's, I think Marvin's a really good player, uh, has been in the past, but it really hasn't shown up this year. Um, so I don't think it's a going to change much from what we've seen from this team. Um, and the fact that he's going to stay around the program, I think is a positive sign. He's uh, Mike Norvell said that Marvin's going to stay at practices. He's going to kind of help coach Robert Cooper co called him coach Wilson. Um, so, you know, that's a, that's a positive thing. It's not like he, he's just walking away. Um, you know, the, you know, as far as, you know, we can talk about the other guys as well, but um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, Tamarian hadn't had a huge impact this season. He's been injured for probably the entire season. He got banged up in the Georgia Tech game and has never really been healthy. Then there's been some, you know, questionable attitude situations as well. So, you know, the biggest impact, ironically, is the guy that probably people know less the least about, Devontae Love Taylor, because once he went out, that offensive line really fell apart. Any meat left on the bone you want to pick at there, Corey? I mean, I guess it's just uh you know, it's kind of crazy to to have expected this sort of big bombshell sort of purge. I mean, this I don't think this was this the purge you think fans were expecting to happen. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, you know, look, I it's a purge. You know, Terry and Blackman are the ones that are leaving. Uh, Blackman, you know, no duh. I mean, we we he just got booed, which was not a good look at all for the hundreds of people that were there. Um, so he he obviously wasn't a part of the future of Florida State, and Tamari and Terry, quite frankly, wasn't either after the end of this month. So you lose a month at Tamari and Terry, but he wasn't going to be back next year. I, you know, you guys know me. I'm a, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, really positive, upbeat. Uh, I don't think this was a terrible day for Florida State. I, I think Marvin Wilson hadn't been himself anyway. They said Jarrett Jackson, the kid from Louisville, is eligible to play now. You get to see what you have in him a little bit. You get other guys reps. 
Devontae Love Taylor, as we've all mentioned, is the biggest uh, is the biggest loss. But Hamsa, I, it would boggle the mind if, if Norvell talked up Hamsa and the way he looked this week in practice for him him not to play again. So maybe Hamsa's coming back. But either way, you're getting you're getting more reps for people that will be here next year. Marvin and Terry weren't going to be here next year anyway. Obviously, James Blackman wasn't either. And even better news is Norvell talking about the possibility of Devontae Love Taylor coming back next season. That is a big, that would be a huge, uh, not a coup, I guess, but that would be a huge, uh, a huge anchor for the line next year to know that this fifth year senior will be able to come back next year would be really big for the, for, for the team. Yeah, Ira, I mean, is that maybe the bigger news of the day? Not so much the loss and the subtraction of the roster, but potentially the return of a, of a Hampson Nasraldine for a, a struggling defense? Yeah, I mean, I think both of them. Well, certainly on Love, Love Taylor. I mean, it's it's one of those things you hate even thinking as a you know media member or fan. When when he got hurt, I thought to myself, man, you know, that's probably going to end any chances he's going to have to play uh, to try to go to the NFL after the season, Devontae Love Taylor. And because he gets this year of eligibility back, it's great for him that he can play next season. Um, so that may work out well for the future for Florida State. I mean, you hate to say that when somebody – as an injury like that, but but the reality is, um, it, it it could help them in 2021. And yeah, the Hamsa, you know, I, I I do think Mike Norvell was trying to spin it forward a little bit. You know, he had just talked about all these guys living leaving the program, and he knows how that looks. Uh, whether or not we we can say pri- pragmatically that none of those guys had really um, done a whole lot this season in terms of t- Terry or or Blackman or Marvin Wilson, the reality is. People are going to be surprised by that. Tomari and Terry was an all ACC wide receiver. Uh, James Blackman was a three, two or three year starter. Marvin Wilson was an all ACC defensive lineman. Um, so that's going to, and, and he didn't leave the program, but he's not playing. So that's going to shock some people. So when Norvell went quickly to Hamsa, that could have been just to kind of get some, get some positive stuff out there. I don't know that it's a guarantee he's going to play this week or the rest of the season. But if he did, if he could, that would be a, to me, Echoing Corey, I think that would be a more positive thing. The fact that that guy's willing to to go out and play for this team in this season, uh, in his last year on campus, probably, um, than losing Tamari and Terry or James Blackman. And let me jump in on Hamza. What I had heard through a scout, it was interesting about Hamza and coming off a major injury. I was told he needs two or three games on film. It's going to hurt his draft stack status a lot if he sits out an entire year after having a knee injury the year before. If he can just go out. So fans may go, why in the world would he come out at this point? The season's lost. Well, it's going to benefit him a lot in the draft coming up. Doing the combine and the workouts is one thing. Going out with full pads on, playing, playing the way we've seen Hamza play in the past to show the NFL, hey, he is the same guy who can run him out and make plays. That could make him a lot of money. So if you're wondering why he may or may not come back, I think that's the one overriding factor if he is fully healthy to come back and play just two or three games for the rest of the season. Corey, since you're Mr. Glass half full, I mean, is there anything to be said about, I mean, it was four players. We kind of got a status update on love Taylor, you know, is injured. Hopefully we'll be back next season, but Norvell was, was quite gracious when talking about James Blackman uh, seemed to be appreciative of, of what Marvin Wilson has done for the, for the team this year. And we'll try to continue for the team. Terry, obviously he did not want to, elaborate on but the fact that of these four sort of big name transactions personnel shakeups i mean three of them are, are on kind of good terms i guess i mean does, does that change uh, the way you digest this information well yeah i know uh you know i was talking about people it, it's a bad look for for people to leave the program i i don't necessarily think florida state fans are going to be really upset with with tamari and terry leaving as good as he's been because it's a throwaway season anyway uh, the outburst he had on the on the sideline against Miami, and frankly, if you don't want to be here, don't be here. And I think that's the message that Norvell didn't say, but was saying. Uh, you asked him, you know, Terry was running around on crutches after the Carolina game, excited about the win. Two weeks later, he's off the team as he worked back to get healthy. So obviously, something happened on Saturday night, Sunday, uh, that rubbed the coach the wrong way, and they they did they had a disagreement, and he left. Well, you don't need that around your team anyway. Frankly, this this season's a loss anyway. You got to see if one of these other receivers can go make a play. Tamari and Terry's not going to be here next year. So I don't think Florida State fans are, um, you know, sad. Not, not sad is not the right word. They're not devastated by the news today about I – mean, they didn't. I don't know if anybody expect Marvin to come back after seeing him in sweatpants uh, for that game on Saturday. And Terry, you know, he, he played two games this year essentially. 
but, so not but huge I, losses. No, I hear you, but I think your perspective and, and our perspective and the people who are on War Chant, their perspective is a little bit different than the rest of the country. You know, the rest of the world, I'm getting texts from people who are Florida State fans, but aren't invested every minute of every day. And they're like, what is going on? Yeah. You know, you're you're two and five and your marquee players are leaving the program. I mean, that's the, you know, they're going to well, see yeah, it a little bit differently. Well, I don't, I don't know that we can say Marvin Wilson left the program. He's he's injured and he's staying around the program. So, Tamari and Terry and James Blackman are big names, man. I like, mean, uh, James, I, again, I, I, James Blackman's not a marquee name. He's not a good quarterback. He was just booed by the fan base. The Tamari and Terry thing, I understand. But and I, I'm and, saying, does that, do you think that makes Norvell look bad, or does I it make Tamari and Terry look bad? It's it's going to make people who already are wondering what's going on in Tallahassee ask even more because, you, as you said, Marvin Wilson. It's not surprising, and I do think he's injured. But the reality is. People are going to see he's sitting out the rest of the season as he's kind of opting out. Uh, I'm not saying that's fair. I'm just saying on top of these other things, nobody saw Marvin Wilson got hurt. Devontae Love Taylor went down on a heap on the field. So people know he got hurt. Marvin, people are going to wonder. Um, so I'm just, you know, I, I'm talking about from an optics standpoint. Yeah. I I agree. With you. I, I, I agree. Yeah, you're talking perception over reality. The yeah. reality is, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference with these guys going up. But from a distance, you're right. You hear Terry, there, Marvin's out. Blackman, who most people, if you ask most people on Florida State fans, they still probably think James Blackman's the starting quarterback at Florida State. So you see those things. It's just it. You see a dumpster fire. A little bit more gas got thrown at this point. So it'll probably go away in a couple of days. But you're right. The initial look is probably not bad from the not great from the outside. Well, sorry, in Marvin Wilson's defense, I guess you know, he did undergo some sort of procedure that Norvell didn't elaborate on. In, in spring yeah. 2018, he missed the entire spring, Willie's first season because of a knee issue. And then in preseason camp before the Boise State game, I think a few weeks before, maybe one of the first days of preseason camp, he went down with another uh, knee injury. So, he, yeah, he I, I, himself. just to clarify, I don't, I 100% know he's hurt. I mean, I believe he's hurt. And I think I saw him limping during the game Saturday. I'm just saying that the perception is going to be different. Oh. Um, and then the other thing, the other, only other thing we didn't talk about was Jordan Travis. Um, you know, Mike Norvell wouldn't give an update there, said he's still kind of going through the process of being evaluated for whether he's going to play Saturday. Um, so we don't have much information there, but I don't think it would be a shock if we end up seeing Chubba Purdy, um, you know, this Saturday. So we'll have to see how that plays out. If we don't see, uh, Chubba to start, I feel we'll see him at some point. We know we've seen this, uh, rodeo before. We know how it's going to start out. Jordan probably goes out. Scores a couple touchdowns, gets banged up. Chubba comes in. <laughs> we see how it goes. Before we get, I know movie. I want to wrap this up. And one thing I looked at, I, I mentioned this to Ira beforehand off the air. It's a little interesting. And maybe uh, Aslan can put this up as our – hate to bring this up, guys. You remember the old top 10 or top 40 players we did back mm -hmm. in the summertime? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. It's amazing if you go back and look at the top 10 now, and maybe Aslan can put that up here for us uh it, it's incredible four of them are no longer part of the program now or at least not on the team right now hamza hasn't played a snap uh two lucas dante lucas and Corey durden massively underachieve i mean when you have your top 10 players the only one that's done anything is asante samuel the other the rest have just been complete washes when your top 10 players are either not playing or underachieved or hurt it, it, it's another thing so yeah that kind of explains why this team is this bad I was going to say that explains the two and five record. Yeah, I mean you don't have a ton of great players, and the ones you thought were good haven't been. Top Except for Asante, shout yep. out to Asante. Yep. He's playing top, well and playing hard. Top ten: Marvin Wilson, number one; Tamari and Terry, number two; Asante, three; Hamsa, four; Dante, five; Jay Sean Corbin, Ooh. six; Darius Washington, seven; Durden, eight; DJ Matthews, nine; Kalen Laburn, ten. <laughs> Man. Yikes. Maybe there's something else next off season to kill the time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Let's Dude, do a top two. Yeah, stay connected to WarChant.com. Uh, plenty more to come from as we get prepared for the NC State game. WarChant report dropping later this week. And as always, uh, Gene with his analysis and prediction of the game. Gentlemen, thank, thanks for the time and the, uh, the knowledge as always.